Hey, hey, it's TDA and welcome to episode 14 of this perfect ratio run. Now, remember when I said in the last episode, hey, next time we are going to go straight for per uh, green signs actually and warpers. Yes, well, that was the plan until I realized I need more foundations. So I made a little build. Um, I'm not going to build it for you because it's really simple. Um, but the older build from the start of this series is really annoying to place down because it uses all types of old materials, smaller belts, um, slower assemblers, etc. So it's a little bit of bonus content for you. I made a new build for this. Uh, it's uh, twice as fast as the old build. It's now making almost five foundations per second. And if you're doing the foundations like I'm doing, then I'm putting them under all your buildings, you will need them. So you can just plop this down a few times if you want. It's a really compact build. I'm actually building it near the pole. Uh, you can do that and you might as well because there's not much builds that you can actually put this close to the, po uh, to the uh, south of North Pole. So make sure you do that. And if you <laughs> have been using as much foundations as I have been, you might have also just gotten this achievement because yeah, placing all these foundations actually gets you a lot of soil pile. Anyway, um, so I was thinking, let's make green science. And there's only one problem with that. And that is you need these graviton lenses. And for graviton lenses, you need strange matter. And for strange matters, you need particle colliders. And actually, you need deuterium as well. And that also needs, well, either fractionators or particle colliders. But particle colliders are way more convenient. So particle colliders we need to build those first and i thought well how hard can that be it's just one building right well uh, as you can see from the recipe it actually needs quite a lot of materials uh, both in terms of the number of materials it needs it's five different materials i think this is actually the only building well not the only building it's only one of the two or three buildings in the game that needs five different materials and they are pretty late game materials so it turned out you actually need quite a lot of lot of materials to do that and quite a big build for that so um that is where we're gonna have to start we are going to construct some particle colliders in this episode so now let me hop to the correct position and let's get that started okay so particle colliders there we are um it actually turns out this build is actually slightly bigger than the previous build as you can see, I measured it out. They fit nicely together. Uh, I'm hoping that this placement won't actually mess with the uh, blueprints. But yeah, let's uh, find out and see. Now, what we're actually going to need to do is make five different materials just to make the, the colliders themselves. And I put them down over here as we are going to supply them to it. Uh, they need to come from all over the place for the simple matter that, for example, processors are pretty early game, while, for example, the frame materials are pretty late game. So, uh, and we are going to start with those ladders. We actually have graphene in here as well. So this is one of the uh, more complicated things about this build. It needs pretty much mid game, end game and late game, uh, early game stuff. So, yeah, all over the place, basically. The interesting thing though about this is that the different materials it needs actually kind of nicely fit together in a certain way not every single part of it does but most of it does so let's uh not waste any further time and let's get started with this now um let's see we are actually going to need some free materials like i said and we i don't think we have actually made those before they need uh, the nanotubes they need the alloy titanium alloy and they need some silicon and we are going to need six of these. So once again, I like my groups of three. I'm going to spread them out like this. And we're going to check out what they need. Well, I just said that what they need. So um, we are going to need to supply this with quite a few things. And one of those things is nanotubes. And we are going to do that from down here. Now, if we do this carefully, we should be able to nicely um, make use of this space that shouldn't be there and let's do that this way around because if we do it like this what we can actually do is put down some uh where are they chemical plants uh, remember chemical plants bane of my existence etc um so what i'm actually going to try to do is space them out a little bit so that we can fit in uh, 11 of these so let me see uh, one, two, three, four, five. Hello, autosave. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. 
And these are going to be, like I said, these are going to be nanotubes. Now, this is actually a huge distance to cover with these things. But we'll have to make it work. And what we're going to do with these as well is that um, this belt is going to be the nanotubes. Let's mark it up. My nanotubes, nanotubes, there we go. Um, we are actually going to need a few different items, along one of which is the titanium. Which is actually going to be on this inner belt. Because the titanium is actually not just going to go into the nanotube, it's also going to go into the titanium alloy. So if we're supplying it anyway, we might as well do it efficiently. Now we also need, uh, actually we don't need this middle belt completely, but let's just leave it there so we don't forget that we need that space. Um, because what we also need is some graphene for this. And then we're already done with the nanotubes. The nice thing about the graphene is that, as you noticed, it's also used in the end game build itself for the colliders. So if we're feeding them in here. We might as well just feed them a little, little bit straight through into the colliders themselves. So by doing it like this, we actually have all the required materials already here. And um, yeah. As you can see, we are going to need a lot of belts. A lot of belts in this build. But that's okay. Um, it's actually not that bad. But it is quite a lot of belts. Especially in this early start. Because these chemical plants, they need so much space. And actually, these are only 11. But then we need the graphene. And because we need some additional graphene... We don't just need 11 of these, we need 13 of these because the graphene is going to go into the um, nanotubes, but it's also going to go into the colliders themselves. So 13. And why 13? Well, as you can see, if I click on the building and the recipe, uh, we actually need, well, not that much, actually 10 per 15 seconds, but that's almost one per second just for the colliders themselves. So, yeah. That is quite a lot. And I am actually taking into account the fact that we're using Mark III assemblers now. So we're actually producing it at a slightly higher speed than the normal recipe. So 50% faster. Uh, and I am, I am taking that into account. So yeah. Okay. So um, graphene. For graphene we need graphite. And we need some acid. Now the acid is also again used in the titanium alloy that we also need for this. And this is where that third belt comes from um, this is going to be the um, acid maybe not all the way up up to here because of course there's nothing that actually needs acid over there but we do need it over here so what we're going to do is we're going to put down the production for the titanium alloy we are going to need eight of those so let me see how should we space that out um, something like this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And this is going to be the alloy, like I just said. There we go. And we already have most of the materials that we need. So we have the titanium, because that's on this build, remember. Uh, we have the acid there, and we have some need for steel. So what we're going to do is we are going to be supplying the titanium alloy to this part of the build. By doing in this and all the way straight free because remember titanium alloy is not just used for the frame material it's also used for the collider themselves so we actually already have the basis for three of the five materials starting to uh, get up and running over here of course we need to connect that uh, remember we also need some silicon for that so we shouldn't forget about that this is going to be silicon and then, finally, we also need steel. So the steel is going to come somewhere from this direction, all the way in here, along with some silicon. And then, just so we don't forget, this is going to be the silicon. This is going to be some steel. Steel, steel, steel. And then we are going to need some titanium alloy. Now, um, just because I like it lined up, we are going to put the markings down here. So we don't have to put them down here. Oh, 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 I wanted to remove you. I wanted to remove you. There you go. Um, this doesn't need to stick all out all that way. And this is again going to be the nanotubes. There we go. Nice and organized. All right. So 
Um, that is a lot of materials. And of course, in order to get the um, asset over there, we also need asset for this. We need some sulfuric acid for the graphene production along with a lot, and I mean a lot of graphene, uh, graphite, sorry. I always mix those two up. Why do I keep doing that? Anyway, um, yeah, so in order to do that, we are going to need to supply this with graphene. And we are going to supply this with, uh, I keep messing it up. It's sulfuric acid, TDA, it's sulfuric acid, please remember. And then we are going to be putting in the acid. Now, we are actually not going to need 13 of these. We're going to need the full row of 15. At least it's easy to place it like that. And, of course, I didn't set the recipe yet, so let's do that. This is not going to be graphene. This is going to be the sulfuric acid. Now, again, one of the nicer things, I think, about this particular build is because we need the acid in two places, not just here, but we also need it uh, up here for the alloy. What we can actually do is use a little trick and just flip it around like so. I'll leave a little bit more space because this uh, tends to conflict sometimes with the other parts of the build. Um, yeah, let's do that like this. And I'll leave some room. Which one was it? The middle one. There we go. Now, of course, we also need the graphene from these last few chemical plants to come in. So they will go over there. So once again, this is the sulfuric acid. This is going to be the graphene. And this is actually going to be the sulfuric acid once again. Assuming I flip the belt around, so let's do that. Because otherwise, of course, it won't work. And then that means that this belt needs to be the belt with the graphite. Graphite, here we go. Now, one thing I really hope the developers change at some point is this T form of belt. I really don't like how this sticks out. It looks really sloppy. Um, it's actually a reason for me to something sometimes do something something really weird like this. Just because it looks more neat. Uh, although this is, looks really messy as well. So it's kind of like picking between two evils. Uh, I'll just do it like this because it's the most straightforward. But yeah, I really hope that at some point they will change that. Anyway. Um, enough about me whining about the belts connecting power. Uh, oh, this is not going to cut it. But luckily we have our little dome up here. And now I just need to find which one it is. Yeah, 500 of those should be more than enough. There we go. Okay, so we need some titanium. And how much titanium do we need? We need 11, which is a little bit of a weird number. But it actually turns out really nice in this particular build because of the space we have up here. So what we're going to do is we are going to put in a 9 like this and then one more. So that makes 10. And along with that, that means that we have it nicely spaced out. And that should be working just fine. Now, what else do we need? Um, we have the titanium. We have the... Um, steel over here so let's make sure we don't forget to draw in those few belts this is still silicon this is still steel and that means that we can bring in the raw materials for the titanium over there all right now this looks all nice and dandy and we are going to go down here for a moment because we've now basically done most of the base materials for the uh, frame materials but we're going to need so much more than that and specifically we also need a lot more base materials for the assets because we need a belt of stone we need a belt of oil and we need a belt of water and we're going to actually bring them in from the uh, ils that i will be putting somewhere over here just have to it's it's a little annoying sometimes to see where you're placing these things but something like this i think should leave a little bit of room for the belt yes so we can actually have this belt from the uh, collider production 
go straight in here. And then we can just draw down the belts for these three base materials over here. <clears throat> now, remember this is going to be the stone uh, closest. We are going to put the oil there and then we're going to put in the water. Water. There we go. All right. Uh, and this is going to be very straightforward. So this is just a matter of drawing out these belts. All the way down there. And there we go. And then a last but not least. Uh, let me double check the spacing on these things. Yeah, I think it's going right for now. Um, last but not least. We are going to be putting in some production for... Um, Two things actually, the uh, processors as well as the super magnetic rings. Now, uh, how are we going to do that? Well, we are going to leave one space just below these three lines. So that is over there. And I think we should probably start out a little bit ahead like this. And then we're going to be putting in a few smelters. And this will make sense in a moment, but bear with me for a second. Um, because we are going to have to... Flip this all the way around. Then we are going to be putting in a belt in this direction. And we are going to have to put in a belt in the opposite direction for this. And once again, it doesn't make any sense for now. But I spent a lot of time trying to figure out a nice clean looking way of placing these buildings. So again, bear with me for just a second. Now, we need the super magnetic rings. And these super magnetic rings uh, actually <laughs> need turbines. Uh, one of my favorite items to make. <coughs> um, graphite and uh, magnets for some reason. And especially the magnets are a little bit annoying because it's such a base material uh, that you're typically already making it on the other half of your build and not necessarily in this high tier item part of your base. So yeah, anyway, where are my drones going? Oh, they are going off in that direction to finish the belt. That's fine. So. Um, what we're actually going to do is we are going to be producing some graphite over here. And we're going to need seven of those, so we're actually a little bit short. So what we're going to do is we're going to be placing two more down here. With two more down there. And that makes seven. And this is a little bit of a weird formation, but it's a nice clean way of doing it when you combine them with the other parts of the build that we need, which is the magnets. And we are going to need 14 of those. So magnets, magnets, there we go. And then, like I said, we need 14 of those. So that's just two rows of seven. Should make 14 if my math isn't failing me. And that means that we also need to be drawing in some raw materials from somewhere to, in order to supply this. But that also means that we can do this. Nicely wrap that around. And then we can take this out and that out. And then we have a few nice belts over here. So finishing off this one. So that means this is actually going to be the magnetic rings. This is going to be the graphite. And then this is going to be the magnets. Now we do need some base material. So we need some um, iron ore over here. And we also need to supply this with some coal. Now what we actually can do is we can do this. Um, something like this. And this doesn't come... Um, too close doesn't really matter you have some wiggling space over here um let's do it like this maybe because if i measure that out correctly we can draw in the raw resource from iron ore over here we can have the second belt with coal over here and then that leaves this one for a little bit of coal over there so once again this is going to be coal just as a friendly reminder, it's going to be iron. This is going to be some more coal. And this was the outgoing belt for the super magnetic. Not those. Not those. Super magnetic rings. There we go. And that also means, of course, that we need to completely wrap this belt around. 
like so. And then we have another base material done. Now we do need the processors, but we also need to make a lot more base materials for <laughs> these rings. Uh, because they need turbines, and they need a lot of turbines. Specifically, they need nine full factories, assemblers, uh, Mark III assemblers actually. So imagine if we were doing this with Mark IIs. We need nine assemblers making these um, turbines, but we are also going to need um, twice as many. So that is 18. Yes, 18 of these assemblers making um, engines. Yes, 18. And once again, imagine if we were doing this with Mark II assemblers. Now, I actually didn't set out any of the recipes yet, so let's do that so we actually know what we're doing. Uh, these are going to be the turbines. So remember, n n nine of those. Nine, there we go. And then finally we need engines. Engines, there we go. 18 of them. Those are so many engines. Now, in order to make sure everything gets where it needs to go, um, we can use this little space in the back to wrap around the um, turbines and make them go in the magnetic wings. Now, the interesting thing is that um, these need a lot of base material, so they need some iron, they need some magnetic rings, the, all, these also need magnetic rings, they also need, of course, the engines themselves. Um, and then the magnetic rings are actually being produced by, we all remember, magnets, as well as some copper. Now, remember the magnets, we also need the magnets for the super magnetic rings. So if we place these smartly, and of course we will do exactly that, uh, the nice thing is we need exactly nine of these. So <clears throat> that's nicely times out with the turbines, the engines, uh, and the uh, magnetic coils like this. If we do it like this, we are going to put in the, the, these in front. Um, are we though? No, actually no, we're not. No, we're not. We are going to be putting the magnets over here. Not magnets, magnetic rings, sorry. Uh, magnetic coils, I mean. I'm, I keep confusing these. Why am I keeping confusing these? Anyway. Um, and then we need the magnets here. And initially I tried to have these magnets go all the way through and supply here as well. But that became really messy in terms of how many uh, belts you need in order to supply this part of the build with the base materials from this part of the build. And you also had a lot of space left over. So I figured why not just make these belts, uh, these uh, magnets over here. You actually need so many magnets in this build as we'll find out in the end. Um, that you actually need more than one full belt of magnets. So I needed to split them up anyway. So this is why I actually put a little bit of this production on this side rather than all the everything on the uh, other side of the build. Um, and I think it really looks nice and clean. So, But that's just me. Um, iron. Iron, iron. So remember, the engines need iron as well. And that means that we are almost done here with that part because we also need to actually get the engines somewhere. And what we're actually going to be doing is um, wrapping these around like this. And like this. Now, let's double check if we did everything right. So, this should be engines. This will be iron. And this should be magnetic coils. Now, that means that we have the magnetic coils over here. We have the engines over here. So, we can actually make these turbines. Now, in order to get these um, engines to do their thing, we are going to need uh, a few more materials. Specifically, we need some cogs. Now, you might think, hey, we have iron here. Let's make the cogs then up there as well uh, you could but that's actually going to be a problem and i'll show you why in a second but for now let's just assume we are getting the cogs in from over here and remember this lower belt is actually also going to be engines and then we have the cogs over there 
So, all in all, pretty nice, clean looking build so far. Um, it's actually not as bad as some of the other building builds we've made because the ratios can be really annoying. I did round a few things up or down uh, in this build again. Um, you don't want to scale up your build in order to get perfect ratios when it comes to buildings because you end up exploding half your planet in order to uh, just get your uh, ratios completely perfect. So uh, you need to probably multiply this with two or three once again, uh, even more than that, I believe, uh, which is really not what you want to do, especially not particle colliders, because to be honest, you don't need that many. And this build might actually already be overkill. So don't bother scaling it up any further. At least I wouldn't do so. I don't recommend that. Um, yeah, so what else do we need? No, well, we're actually going to need some processors. And yes, I am going to skip for the moment the um, box. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten about them. But we need the processors. And why am I putting them over here? Well, processors need a few more things. Uh, for example, they need um, not just components, but they also need circuit boards. There we go. Actually, we only need one circuit board production and we are going to need some components. Now, why am I putting them over here? Well, the reason for that is actually really simple. Uh, one belt I haven't actually laid down here is the belt for the copper. And that needs to go <coughs> all the way in the back over here. Because, of course, these magnetic coils need copper. And um, let's mark that up just to make sure that we remember that it's actually here. And... Um, yeah, these are going to be the magnets. And once again, remember, this is just simple iron. And then this is going to be the coils. There we go. And I'll... This is a little bit of my OCD, but I'm just going to be putting in that like this. Um, actually, the top belt was the cox. There we go. Okay, so nice and organized. Now... Uh, in order to get this to do what we wanted to, we are going to be putting in a mini belt over here that is going to be supplying some circuit boards. And then we are also going to need some um, components. Uh, we can do that nice and easy like this. And this is going to be the components. Uh, components. Micro crystalline components to be exact. Now, the nice thing about this is that because we've built it like this, what we can now do is make a belt go like this. And then all the way down there. All the way down here. All the way around here. And all the way down there. And that completes our fifth resource for the colliders. Now, of course, we are not quite done yet. Because we also need some smelters and things like that. Um, so, yeah. Let me get to that. Um, I'm going to be right back. Because there is apparently someone at my door. So, hold on. Be right back. And I'm back, package received. Anyway, um, you don't care about that. We, you care about how we make those cogs that I skipped. Well, we are going to be making them over here. And we need quite a few of them. Once again, we need nine of them. Even though we are already using Mark III assemblers. We need so many of those. And remember, we have the iron coming in right over here. So we can feed from that. Um, actually, we will not be able to feed from that. Because... All these other items, so the um, uh, the engines mostly, are using so many, so many, so many iron that we won't actually be able to have enough iron on this belt to do that as well as the cocks. Because remember, these are not just taking 9 per second like Mark II assemblers would be doing. They are taking almost 14 per second. So that means we will need a secondary belt supplying the iron uh, probably somewhere down here. And that means that we will have a belt of iron over here and a belt of iron over here where the bottom one is being used for the cogs. And of course, we do need to actually have a belt to put them on so that one will be over there. Now, 
that means that we are uh, a long way into our base materials now. So now we just need a lot, and I do mean a lot, of smelters. Um, we have the belt with copper over here. And uh, actually, is this the copper? No, this is not. Yeah, this is the copper, actually. Never mind. Um, but we also need um, quite a bit of copper. And we need also need some silicon. Because remember, we need some silicon over here as well as in the top. Now, again, it's quite annoying if you try to combine all the silicon production in one space. Although it looks really neat. Uh, it won't actually work out perfectly if you try to do that. Uh, I do need to be a little bit careful because I do want to align my um, assemblers and my smelters nicely. So let me, I think, place this over here. Yeah. We are going to be putting 2 plus 6 is 8 smelters of copper. Which is actually not enough, but hold on. Um, we are going to be putting in a belt to supply set copper. We're going to do that like this. Actually, not like that. Like this. Because we also need to get the raw copper from somewhere. And then we also need uh, some silicon, like I just said. And we are going to be putting that over here on the top. And because we have been placing this belt as we have. Now, just putting it down so you can see what I'm doing. Um, this is the copper. This is going to be the raw incoming copper. And this is going to be the raw incoming silicon. Now, um, because this is three spaces and two spaces, these both will be able to reach this belt. And then we can go all the way down here. Now we need that silicon. We only need about four smelters of that. So we can do those like this. And this is why I needed to kind of measure it out correctly. Otherwise you get into space issues. Because of the um, uh, chemical plants. And then we have finally the belt of silicon bars. So this silicon and this is the raw silicon. Um, does that, is, is that everything? No, it's not. Because remember, magnets. We need lots and lots of magnets. So we also need the magnet production over there. But before we get to that, we also need some stuff up here. And specifically, we need an ILS up here. Because we are going to be supplying a lot of base materials from over here. And we are going to do that... Doesn't really matter, I think, how exactly we do that. So let's just place it over here. Uh, remember, we need some raw titanium. Which is going to be this. I think. Yes. And remember, we also needed some steel. And we needed some titanium. Uh, not titanium, silicon. Uh, yeah, so something like that. Now, if we go back to the smelters, um, let's make sure we align these nicely as well. Uh, we are going to need some graphite as well. And I'm actually going to go down here again because, once again, I do want to really align these nicely. And it works best if I actually place these down first so remember we need graphite graphite over here and something like that this is the graphite belt now in order to make that we are going to need quite a few smelters because this is a very slow recipe as always and we are going to need not just one but 13 and not just one row of 13. No, we are going to need two rows of 13 smelters. All making graphite. So. That should do nicely. Now, what I'm actually also need. What I also need to do is, of course, supply them. And in order to get the graphite to actually go down here. We're going to do the little wraparound thing once again. And just do it like that. And that means that we can now just bring in the coal from over here. 
and do that something like this and that should be easy to supply all the coal that we need like that now remember we also needed steel and in order to make steel you first need to make iron and if you remember that from the previous builds it's a one-to-one -one ratio so if we make uh, I think we need eight yes eight and what we can actually do is once again make sure we leave one two spaces in between and then do it like that but this is not going to be iron this is going to be the steel now this is at a distance where you can still reach it with a sorter directly like that and that means that we don't need to bother with a belt for the um, iron no we can just do something like this and put in the iron like that now what does that leave that leaves this silicon because of course we also need some uh, let me make sure I reset that there we go not not no 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 not there like this we also only need three silicon and of course we also need to supply that with some raw materials but we have have an ILS over here that is now supplying four different materials this is going to be silicon at least silicon ore some iron ore some coal and we already had titanium on the other side so that's four materials so that leaves space for warpers as always in the fifth slot to request those directly now the iron sorry the steel is going to go all the way down there and then that leaves the silicon to go there now that almost almost brings us to the end of this build <clears throat> but we need a few more things specifically what we need is a lot of iron and we are also going to need a lot and i do mean a lot of um magnets magnets was the word i was looking for um now let's see what we're actually going to do is we are going to use a few splitters um like that in order to make sure that all the iron that we're making down there is not just going down there but also will go up there and then we need some smelters and what we're going to do is we are going to be putting in a belt something like this and how close can we get it something like this i believe yeah there we go this is going to be iron. Now, how much iron do we need? Well, a lot. A lot. We are going to be placing 11 down here. And then 10 more up here. And then we are going to keep skipping one. And then we're going to be putting 10 more. And another 10. Now, what does that do for us? Well, it makes a pretty nice build when it comes to actually supplying all of this stuff with iron. Something like that. And I had an excuse here not to use the T curve. Anyway, um, but we also need, of course, to supply this with uh, iron now. And because we are going to need so much iron over here, what we actually do is we wrap this around. Now remember, this is um, enough in order to um, supply these uh, smelters. Uh, but <clears throat> these there are more than 30 smelters over here. So we will need a second belt. And that one will wrap all the way around here. And then go down here. Remember, you can't just do this with one belt. You will run short in terms of... Uh, the belt speed because you won't be able to supply all the smelters if you don't split them up like this now that does mean we have to put in an ILS here somewhere and we have plenty of room to do that um, does it really matter where we put it I don't think so but this is as good as any place I suppose that also means that this is now in a nice position where we can simply get in the um, other base materials. So this will be the silicon and then the, here we have the copper. So this is three materials so that is easily supplied by this one ILS. 
And then finally, we are going to need some smelters for the um, magnets. And let me make sure we align this properly with all the other smelters. There we go. And similar to the rows below, what we actually need is one row of um, nine, I believe. Ten, sorry. This is ten. Yes. And similar to the other build below, let me switch this to copper so I don't have to redo this entire thing. There we go. Um, this is a second row of ten. Then we are going to need a row of eleven. And then we are going to need another row of eleven. And that should be that. Um, of course, now we do need to make sure we actually get those magnets to go where we want them to. And I just realized I made a small mistake over here because this is not actually going to work out like we wanted to. We are going to have to put in the belt like this. Now the real question is, does this fit? Yes, it does. Oh, this is interesting. So, yeah. No, we will have to actually move this just a tiny little bit. In order for it to really be nicely aligned with everything. So, we might as well just bring it in a little further like this. Uh, is it in the middle like this? Yeah, I think it is. There we go. Okay. So. Uh, it will make sense in a moment why I'm doing it like this because what we actually need to do is half sentences don't you just hate it when someone does that sorry just want to wrap this up before i talk you through it okay so um we are going to bring in the um magnets from over here and we're going to have them straight go through this thing and then down here and remember, this is our magnet belt. Now, in order to do that, we uh, need a space in the eyeless. So we simply put ma oh, magnets as one of the items here that is also being supplied. So it will just go in this thing and straight through into this other thing. You actually you can just set it to zero or to 100 if you want to make sure it's actually working. Um, and it will take it in and spit them straight out. Um, so even though this thing is in the way, we don't need to bother with um, bridges or uh, heightened belts or anything like that. No, we can just have it go straight through. It will look really neat. Um, but that also means, that, of course, that we need to wrap up the build because otherwise we don't, won't actually do anything. Now, similar to the build that we had below for the iron, what we're going to do is we are going to have two supplying belts like this. This is going to collect the output and then we're going to have to put in one belt like this with raw resources which is going to wrap around like so and then one more and it's going to go all the way around and over here in the back and now we actually do have some open space left so what I like to do with that, and this is just my personal preference, so you don't need to take this over. But if you have small open spaces like this, we might as well just put in some solar panels. They look really organized. They look really clean. Um, similar in this area, there is an open space here that we're not using. So why not put in some solar panels? You can never have enough power, as you are probably aware by now in this part of the game. So. Why not use the space that if you have it left? Um, yeah. You can take them out if you want. But all in all, I think if you now zoom out, they're just an integral part of the build. You can actually maybe place some more down here or something like uh, uh, around the edges if you want. Personally, I don't necessarily like having a single row of um, solar collectors, but yeah, you can do that if you want. Now, of course, the one thing we have left is always the most fun part of the build. I need to hook everything up to power and I need to make sure everything has the sorters sorted out. So be right back while I do that before we wrap up. 
Alrighty, and we're done. I hook everything up to power. I'm actually a little bit underpowered at the moment because of their four ILSs that are currently charging up. But as you can see, all the resources are being supplied. Everything is working. The entire factory is up and running. Um, there's a few things that are bottlenecked somewhere else in the um, equation because of um, the slower production that started up initially in part of my build. So, uh, for example, these um, super magnetic mag rings were the first things to start producing. So this belt is full. Well, the other belts are not because I had an issue here with the frame materials. The belt was the wrong way around. So if you're wondering why this is stacked up, that's the only reason. But that should take care of itself along the way. Um, we are actually currently producing some particle colliders, as you can see. We have the first four up and running. The next one is already in production and this will slowly start ticking away. Now you don't want to set this up to a high maximum. You don't need that many particle colliders. You could in theory uh, scale it up a little bit, but I want to be careful because why? Well, if we look at the copper remaining in our system, we are down to under 1 million copper. Um, yeah, that's all the copper there is in our system. So most of that is luckily on our starting planet. Uh, we have a little bit on the second planet and then we have a tiny little bit on this current planet, but that's it. And then we are out of copper. Uh, One million, of course, is still quite a lot, so no need to panic. But yeah, uh, we do want to start focusing on that purple science and specifically on those warpers. Let's just crank this up to 200 maybe, but that's all we need for now. Okay, uh, another really nice interesting build. It's quite large. It's uh, actually slightly larger than the previous build we did. I do like this build a lot. It's really clean. It's really structured. Um, I also like the little solar panels in here. Um, but yeah, if you also enjoyed this one, like the video. That really helps the YouTube algorithm find it. Subscribe if you haven't. And... I really hope next time we will be able to focus on the green science. Now there is one last thing before we go uh, that I almost forgot to mention is that the way I positioned this right now is actually in such a way that like you can see it's not in the middle area of the planet but it's actually in the second belt between the two fault lines that you can see over here. Um, I intentionally did it like that because this is usually one of the areas of the planet that's harder to use. Uh, so actually this might not actually be bigger than the other build but just more stretched out because we are in the second uh, vault line row. Um, depending on where you build this on your planet you could get into some issues with the blueprint. Uh, specifically I think you might have a few issues with these um, assemblers because as you can see they are really packed tight together and usually they're not so if you compare that with these assemblers down here there's a lot more space between them even though they're in the closest distance both here as well as there um, so I will take a look at if the blueprint is actually uh, placeable everywhere we want it to be placed uh, and I'll try to make it so so I might make a few small adjustments to the blueprint if it turns out that we need that in order for you to be able to place it wherever you want um, but yeah take that into account I've built this in the second tier row uh, on the planet between the first and the second fault lines counting from the middle so if you just place your blueprint in the same area on, or in, at least in a similar area on your planet it should work if it's not working and uh, then you might have to remove one or two buildings from the blueprint before you place it down and then have to rebuild those afterwards. But once again, I'll try to make sure that's not needed. Just pointing it out right now in case that confuses anyone. All right, I hope you enjoyed this one and I will catch you in the next one.